Hi, it's the Hobo. I have a couple of uh, Maxwell trial sources for you if you're interested in following that trial. I know it's not being televised, but uh, these two have been uh, going to the court or going to the courthouse most every day. Uh, the first one is Good Logic, L A W G I C. He's on um, YouTube. And let me show you his report from the day, and then we'll move on to the next one. You want to know how a defense team knows they've been having a brutal morning? It's when they spend three hours cross-examining a witness who has portrayed their own client as Cruella DeVille. And when they sit down and they're finally done with their cross-examination, the judge looks at the prosecution and says, redirect? And they stand up and say, no questions, Your Honor. That's how you know you've had a bad day. When the prosecution isn't concerned about anything you elicited at all in three hours, you know you had a bad day. That's a bad day. And I have to tell you, the prosecution was right because the defense had a very bad day. A very tough time with Mr. Alessi. Frequently, comments that he made, or questions that he was being asked by Mr. Pagliuca, who really struggled, was he would just, the witness would bite back snarkily at him with a quick jab and another punch at Ghislaine Maxwell. For example, when he's asked about being able to keep up with the manual, he said, you didn't really like to follow the manual. So he said, no, it was slavery. It was another punch at Ghislaine Maxwell. Just over and over, moments like that would come up and the room around me would be chuckling audibly because he would just keep punching back and punching back at how Ghislaine Maxwell was such a terrible human being. In fact, there was even testimony that was elicited that didn't really come out as clearly on direct when he asked a question trying to imply that Mr. Alessi was involved in recruiting girls for Jeffrey Epstein and that he too was part of this whole scheme as if that was, that was his role. And, he, and Mr. Alessi responded by saying he drove Ghislaine Maxwell around from Boca Raton to Jupiter, Florida touring every massage parlor they could, massage schools, looking for girls that they could find to bring, home, to bring home to his house to give massages to him in private. And <laughs> that basically, it was just another opportunity to not just say that Mr. Alessi wasn't involved in it, but that he was constantly under the direction of Ghislaine Maxwell in trying to help Jeffrey Epstein find more girls that he can get massages from. So the, uh, the other problem that he had is when he tried impeaching Mr. Alessi by bringing in various affidavits or depositions that he had taken and other private actions. So, one, so he would try to take words that Mr. Alessi was, was swore under oath that they were true and say, well, this is contradicting what you're saying here in your testimony today. And one of the things that doesn't play in a transcript, when, you're, when you guys are reading the transcript and you are following that, you can't appreciate is this. Mr. Alessi is not a native English speaker. He was born in Quito, Ecuador. And some of his phraseology is very different from the way Native Americans speak. Now, when he speaks, it's really clear and evident to anyone who's hearing him from his tone and the way he's speaking, what message he's trying to convey. But if you actually look at the words just read the words. The words sometimes have the exact opposite meaning of what is obvious that he's trying to convey. So, for example, if there's a question saying, he, 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 would, he would be questioned saying, well, you said, I used to call to get girls to come to the house. Which is, and he's questioned about that saying, you see, you used to go out, try to call to get girls to come to the house. And he, and he would say, he would say, no, I never call girls. I never call girls. I never call girls. Mr. Epstein said, call girls. He knows. I call. That's, but it's like, it's obvious that like, okay, I can understand how in a deposition he would make a statement saying, I call girls. But he doesn't mean I recruiting girls. I'm trying to find new girls. It's Mr. Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein would say, call a girl, call, call Joni. And he would call Joni and he would give him the number. He would be the one to make the phone call. Because that's what Jeffrey Epstein, or frequently Ghislaine Maxwell, would tell him to do. 
So you'd be like, oh, okay, you want me to call Joni? I'll call Joni. It's not he's going out and looking for Joni. He's not finding Joni. He's calling whatever name and number he's being told to call and scheduling her to come at 10 o'clock. In fact, at one point, and this was something that really blew up in Paliuko's face, is, and I, I was wondering what he was even thinking asking this line of questions, is that he started saying things like, so you used to... Um, you used to call the girls that you were told to call? Yes. And you would sometimes drive and pick up girls? Yes. And you sometimes would, you would set up the, the massage table? Yes. And you would um, direct them to come into the house? Yes. And you would, and you would be responsible to get, for paying them? So you, and, you expl- and then he started explaining how the payment process goes with, and how that would operate with the checks or cash. He spent a couple minutes on that. And then Paliuka would say, and you, you weren't involved in sex trafficking, were you? And the state says, objection sustained. So, because the objection is that it was, it was calling for a legal conclusion. But the, uh, the point here is, so what do you, it sounds so empty. It sounds so stupid to try and compare this guy who was clearly a minion to what Ghislaine Maxwell was doing, that it just... It doesn't read as if, oh, okay, you're making points with the jury. It just came across as if you're trying so desperately to compare something which is thoroughly incomparable that I think you just lose points for for coming across as being thoroughly disingenuous. So, and apparently the prosecution agreed with me because they basically said no questions. So all in all... It came across like it was a terrible morning. They made no ground, if anything. By the time they were done, I thought Ghislaine Maxwell looked worse than, he, than before the cross-examination began. So that's what happened this morning. The follow-up after the cross-examination, the state called on a police officer named Gregory Parkinson, who started talking about a visit that he made back in 2005. And all we've gotten so far is that there were... He was giving out the layout of the property and describing what it looked like in 2005. He made reference to a search warrant that was issued at that time and how they searched the house, but we have no idea what they found as of yet. Unfortunately, as many of you know, I'm not going to be able to go back into the trial this afternoon. I'm going to have to catch up on transcripts like the rest of you. And for the balance of testimony, I will be back here, God willing, Monday morning. And I urge you that if you want more updates from me, and you want to find out more in-depth detail about how this case is proceeding, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, and you must hit the bell. I'm constantly being told by people, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how YouTube unsubscribed me from you. I see numbers just dropping by the hundreds over a period of an hour sometimes because that's what YouTube does. So I urge you, make sure you hit the bell and catch my live streams. I live stream nightly, Sunday to Thursday, from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern. So you really want to catch that. That's where I go and tell. This channel is Maxwell House. That's all we're doing until this trial is done. It is the house of Maxwell. I'm just fixated here. I'm locked in. And I'm the only attorney here. So make sure you stick around. Till Sunday night. Take care of yourself. Great weekend. Godspeed. All right. That was Joe at Good Logic. And... Uh, both of the links will be in the description for these two people. Next one up is Nadia, as in uh, New York Nadia. Eric Nadia here. Uh, Instagram deleted my live, so I couldn't save it to my um, IGTV, so I'm doing it again. I'm on lunch break here at the Glade Maxwell trial. And just to let you guys know, a couple of uh, bombshells that happened today. Um, the, the defense, I, I'll get the guy's name for you, but the defense today called the accuser who was using the alias Jane by her legal name inside of the courtroom, which was a huge, like, wow, who does that? Who does that? This woman has gone through so much to uh, keep her identity a secret and all of his documents should have been redacted. If he was a professional, that's what would have happened. That's not what happened. And all of us in the room that I was in, which was 506, just gasped, like, what? did you just do like why would you do that why who what professional attorney does something like that number one number two the other thing was that um the uh right now we broke for lunch and right before we broke for lunch we had a gentleman who worked for the uh, palm beach police department he had also gone to quantico he had a very long history he's retired 
of um, law enforcement work and he was responsible for the uh, evidence for uh, the Palm uh, Beach uh, Police Department and he was testifying about the time that they went in in 2005 into Jeffrey Epstein's house and he identified everything and um, he thankfully took video of the house before they went in or before they started getting the evidence out and also what the house looked like afterward just for proof that they hadn't really dam they hadn't damaged anything and that folks is the only evidence that any of us will ever see because immediately after they did the search of Jeffrey Epstein's house in 2005 the FBI contacted the uh, Palm Beach Police Department and asked for all the evidence ASAP and which they did they they went ahead and gave it over I mean they had no other choice uh, the gentleman said that they formed a human chain and they uh, took the evidence out one by one, piece by piece, and handed it over to the um, FBI. And the FBI took all of the evidence, so we will never see that. And the only thing that we have is this gentleman's video, which we are gonna be shown after lunch break, thank God. And hopefully something will be there that will be able to prove this case, you know, not in the hands of the FBI, because as we all know, the FBI gave Epstein a sweetheart deal without even alerting the accusers that they were going to do so, which was unprecedented and completely shifty. Can I just say, who does that? And he did, I think, a year and it was like uh, basically house arrest and he was able to leave his house during the day. He just had like a monitor on at night, which for the crimes that he was accused of, like, how is that a thing? And so we obviously know now why the FBI was involved straight from the beginning. Like I said, the day that the Palm Beach uh, Police Department got the evidence from his house, the FBI was immediately asking for all of the evidence and they had to hand it over. So they don't have any evidence from the house. None of us are gonna see the evidence from the house. The FBI had all the evidence from the house right at the start. And the only thing we have going for us now is the videotape. So I will keep you guys updated tonight on my YouTube channel. It's New York Nadia. Please, if you're interested in finding out more, knowing more details about the um, trial today, today is day five. It's Friday, uh, December, I think, 4th, I, I'm sure, or 3rd, something like that. And I will do a live for members. Please go to my YouTube page and join and the live will take place at 8 p.m. tonight. So I will let you guys know everything. Please think about any questions that you might wanna ask me, specifics. I think the transcripts are out on like CNN if you guys wanna read them and um, kind of like go through them a little bit to see if you're gonna have any, any questions whatsoever. And I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Keep in mind that even though you have access to the transcripts, the transcripts do not give you the visuals, the transcripts do not give you tone. And there's a lot of things happened today, just a lot. Uh, the first witness was a, a cross-examination of the chauffeur that had been with Epstein for years and who had had first eyewitness account. He had picked up Jane many times as well as other accusers. And, um, and so he knew the scoop and that was a fantastic cross-examination, not on the defense's side. They completely failed yet again, but on the side of the witness, he did a phenomenal job of standing his ground. And even though there was a language barrier because the gentleman is Hispanic and an older Hispanic, but he stood his ground and he did not let the defense try to confuse him or like bully him or bludgeon him into answering questions that clearly were poorly framed and just like yesterday with Menninger, I mean, sorry, the day before with Menninger, same thing. This is a really, I don't understand this defense. I just don't, I, I don't get it. But anyways, um, I love you guys. Yes, I'll stay dangerous. Was it Clavid 94? Yeah. Thank you so, so much. I woke up and damn, I love that name. That's funny. Um, I love you guys. Be well, be happy, be joyous. It's Friday. Enjoy your day with your loved ones and the people that care about you because that matters. Don't forget that. Okay. I love you guys. And I, hopefully I will see you guys tonight on YouTube again, New York, Nadia. All right. Uh, that was New York, Nadia. I'm not going to post more updates from then. I, I just wanted you to know where to find the information if you're interested in following the Maxwell trial. And I'll put uh, both their descriptions um, 
or both their links in the descriptions. All right, that's all I have. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.